Um, so tonight, I'm delighted to say that we are joined by uh, Steve Wright, who is an academic subject manager from the University of South Wales. And tonight's session is all about fashion design. So thank you so much, Steve, for joining us. Um, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, well, hi, everyone. Uh, as just said, I'm Steve Wright. I'm the academic subject manager for fashion, marketing, advertising and photography. So everything um, at the University of South Wales. And I'm going to talk to you about fashion design today. I'm just going to share my screen and um, walk uh, walk through it. If anyone has any questions, chuck into the chat and, um, and we can crack on. I can talk about fashion till the cows come home. Um, OK. How's that looking? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I've been asked to talk about, you know, why you should study fashion design. And I start off by kind of saying, welcome. As I say here in Wales, which is where I'm, where I'm from, uh, Croeso, Croeso means welcome in Welsh. Um, and it's a big kind of part of what we do. You might not necessarily think of um, Wales when you think of fashion design. They're kind of massive fashion cities in the world. Um, but it's always good to have a think about how the, the kind of broader UK works and connects to our fashion system and, and how big it really is. Uh, just some, I always like to start off with some love, lovely stats. So our university, the University of South Wales, is ranked number one in the UK for student satisfaction and assessment satisfaction. Uh, big things when it comes to studying to make sure that you are satisfied with, um, with you know, your experience and how it's going. Of course, number one in Wales for lots of different things and number two in the UK for teaching, which we're very, very proud of. But when we talk about fashion, I think it's important to think about how broad it is. You know, fashion really is everywhere. It's, um, you know, about 8, million, 8 billion people engage with what we do every day. It's one of the only industries uh, in the world that kind of touches every single person every single day. Uh, it's uh, connected to something like food, for example, as, as ubiquitous as that. So fashion is kind of what we wear, you know, the clothes that we put on our backs every day. It's what we watch. If you think about trends in film and TV. I did a, a, a UCAS fair last week and I was doing a presentation. I asked the audience who watches live TV and everyone kind of looked at me a bit like, what do you I'm like? Yeah, no, we watch live TV. And I said, no, who goes home and turns the TV on and watches what's on the TV? Every single hand went down. You know, we think about the way we can consume things changes with, uh, with social and societal fashion. Fashion is what we buy. Um, if I asked people 10 years ago about um, ring lights and, you know, headsets and mics, people wouldn't really have a, an idea of what I was talking about. Now people really know what those things are. Uh, fashion is what we do. Things like our activities and pastimes, um, kind of really popular things. And things like for, for, for kind of middle-aged people like me, maybe things like stand-up paddleboarding and stuff like that. People, going, people are trying to kind of go on more adventure holidays than they are trying to buy objects. You know, fashion is uh, what we taste. So changes in food and, and uh, you know, the last few years, sriracha was on everything. Uh, now, and before that was bacon. Now, now we've come changing new things. So these things change with different fashions. What we hear, the types of music, and I'm sure you guys can understand that music has changed over the years and, and, it, and it changes with fashion. And fashion is really, uh, well, what we smell, things like cologne and uh, perfumes and all that kind of stuff, uh, the type of, of scents that we enjoy. What we see in terms of like arts and media and and uh, culture that we consume, in short, you know, fashion is fashion is everything. And you know, of course, I'm going to say that because I come from a fashion background and I, and I love fashion. But if you really think about it, fashion is a kind of gateway to humanity, and it's the way that people express who they are and connect to each other. Uh, I'm sure amongst your friendship groups that you have. Uh, kind of trends and fashions and maybe there's a person in the group who's a little bit ahead of everyone else and someone who's a little further back than everyone else but most of us kind of sit in the middle there where we kind of see what happens and we we like to kind of dress or look a bit similar to everyone else so according to the british fashion council the fashion industry is worth about 26 billion pounds uh, and 800,000 jobs to the UK. And you can see I've said here that it's the largest creative industry in the country. It is. Uh, the creative industries as a whole is growing at twice the size of the rest of the economy. Um, and one in 11 jobs across the United Kingdom is in the creative industries. Fashion is a massive part of that. Um, think not just um, kind of apparel, but um, when I spoke before about what we watched, think about costume. I know that was big in the poll there. You know, costume is a massive part of, of what we do in the British film industry at the moment is growing exponentially. Here are some of the labels that, um, that 
that uh, our universities worked with um, in the recent past. And you can see some kind of big ones there like uh, Givenchy, um, some French Connection, Hunter. We've got British brands like Rayburn, Gareth Pugh, Mary Catran Zoo, and then a bunch of like other weirdo ones that maybe you haven't seen or really mainstream ones like Peacocks. Um, you know, the, it, it's a very, very broad industry and uh, studying fashion or studying fashion design in particular gives you insight into all these different industries. I know when I, when I graduated with my fashion degree, uh, it seems like it was about 10,000 years ago now, but it was 2003, I imagine before most of you were born, um, which is depressing, but real. Uh, and things like social media didn't exist. So the industry that I graduated into is drastically different to the industry today. There are so many industries that, that, that move very slowly. Fashion is absolutely not one of those. So studying fashion design gives you a really great diverse skill set to be able to kind of keep up and evolve with, with changes. But when we talk about uh, fashion, we have to think that fashion is, is really uh, design, right? Uh, and des design is about problem solving. Um, so I've clicked on my thing, there we go. And designers explore things that we might call the wicked problems associated with fashion. So they're like sustainability, ethics, and body image. And traditionally, fashion's had a, a very poor reputation when it comes to dealing with, with problems. In fact, it's probably had a pretty well-earned uh, reputation of, of causing some of them. But the industry is changing. And it takes designers with excellent problem-solving skills uh, and, and gives them really good uh, transferable skills. So it, it's asking you to take these skills and to use them in lots of different ways. I've got graduates who, who uh, work across all different sectors. Uh, one, of my, one of my graduates who graduated a couple of years ago now works as a puzzle designer, which is very strange, but she loves it. So first poll. Okay, Jess, you can help me out by setting this thing up. Um, what is the biggest issue that you think is facing the fashion industry? It's one of the things I, I ask uh, students often when they apply for, for the course. Wow. Okay. I see. So this is interesting. There's a kind of a, a real interesting breakdown here. Okay. So looking at the, these two responses, we've got fast fashion and environmental impact as the two biggest ones. And I think you're right. And I, when I, when I, when I first started teaching sustainable fashion about 10 years ago, maybe a bit longer than that now, one of my students said to me, like, I don't care if fashion destroys the world. I want to be wearing a polar bear skin fur coat standing on the last iceberg in the world, as long as I look amazing. And the, but the world's changed. You know, the world's a really different place. And to see young people like yourselves point this out or kind of uh, look at this fast fashion environmental impact as being two of the biggest challenges, I think is, I think is really correct. Absolutely, workers' rights are a massive problem. And 100% under -represented consumers are really, are really serious. One of the things that, that we see is that the fashion industry only caters for a very small portion of people. Okay, let's move on. You guys are all clued up. Oh, how do I stop this? Ah. So I'm gonna show you some images now and I'm gonna talk you through them a little bit because what, what they are is just examples of student work. And this is an example of um, students kind of solving problems. You can see here at the top, we've got our kind of backpack or rucksack um, and how, how it's gonna be created. On the left here, can you use my little pointer here? Yeah, on the left here, we've got this is a 3D printed shoe that was designed. It had uh, has heating coils in it, so you know it helps you ha um, not have cold feet. You know, really simple thing. This is a dress that's made out of uh, um, car tires of inner tubes, all stripped out and and turned into a garment, which creates something out of waste. You know, and it's about it is as I said about creative problem solving. So fashion's at the forefront of technology, the look good and feel of your new phone, the new skin for your avatar, for those of you who play Fortnite and other games out there, you know, it's how fashion, fashion is how technology gets adopted. You know, if we think about um, the rise of influencer culture, this is predominantly how new trends get started. You know, uh, a tech company, for example, which we're talking technology, uh, a tech company would uh, give uh, a new phone, a kind of new new product to an influencer, they share it and it grows, grows like that. You know, it's not rocket science, it is just fashionable. So this is something that one of our students put together a couple of years ago and it's using 3D modeling software, uh, which is where we're kind of headed in fashion. Headed, fashion's headed to kind of 
a more virtual world rather than your kind of physical environment. So you can see here what the person is doing is, is designing in 3D, right? So if we're talking about the idea of environmental impact and um, fast fashion, well, actually, I'm going to go back to that side. I quite like that one. What, we, what the person is creating here is something where a person can put their head on a, on, a, on a body, on an avatar. They can get a photo for Instagram or for TikTok. They can get a moving image for TikTok. Uh, and they don't have to produce a physical thing. You know, if we're, if we're saying, okay, we want clothes that we, we take a photo in and then we never wear again, which is not uncommon, um, this is a way to do that without causing environmental damage. The other thing to, to, to really think about when it comes to, to fashion is that actually it's quite fun. You know, I've spoken that, it, that it's pretty depressing, but, you know, it allows us to play with identity and allows us to, to change the way we look and change the way we, we feel. And it allows us to kind of do things psychologically. There is a kind of psychological phenomena in fashion called enclosed cognition. And it's really the way we feel when we wear clothes. And the idea uh, with that is that maybe you're going to a job interview or maybe you're going to a party and the clothes that you wear really impact your mood when you're at um, those places. I'm going to show you another video now. This is by one of our students who's in her final year this year. She did this last year. She was, she was in her second year. And the students were tasked with using new technology to create something, a fashion object, um, that we could be used against COVID. Now, of course, COVID's everywhere, you know, the whole thing. Um, people might be a bit sick of it, but this is an interesting kind of maybe creative approach to, to solving the issue. So you can see she's got her jackets with a little zip up at the front. With a detachable mask. And then she's designed this little thing that you wear on your wrist that fits a little capsule in it that has a hand sanitizer in it. So that's a kind of way for, for us to think about how fashion can be used for good. You know, that, that's a, a really fun, fashion-y, cool little techie product. This is another collab that one of our students did um, with Adidas or Adidas, depending on, uh, on where you are and how you pronounce it, looking at um, working with Fabricant and Carly Kloss on a, uh, a kind of new type of jacket that responds to air pollution. So the idea with this is that the fabric, the color of the fabric will change um, when uh, it comes in contact with pollution. So you can see that fashion is more than just kind of maybe the way things look, it's, it's, it's a functional thing as well. So, so this is some more stuff from students. And this is just kind of gives you a bit of a snapshot on how students work. Um, this is uh, a sketchbook from one of our students. And you can see the bottom here, this is her playing with ideas. So she's kind of, um, she's from the north of, of England. Uh, and she's been inspired by this terrifying um, head. Um, and you can see her playing with things like patterns and prints and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the same kind of thing, this is a, a, a first year student just playing with shapes. Now, you, you know, often people kind of say to me, oh, well, I could never study fashion because I can't draw, I can't sew. Like, this is not drawing, this is design thinking. Um, and we will teach you all the skills you need on how to make, make garments and how to draw things. Um, it's crazy to think that you have to come to a course with a bunch of skills already. You'll already have a bunch of different skills that we can use. And uh, in our course, we have a, an optional sandwich year. So between the second and third year of the program, students can um, go and work in the industry. 
uh, for a year. And I, I'd suggest that that's probably a really good place to be and a really good thing to do. And if you are considering studying fashion design, look for a course that has that particular option. Um, this is a, a student called George, who's from the Forest of Dean. Um, and she went and worked for a range of different companies, but uh, predominantly working for Goose and Gander, where she designed and produced kind of sample garments for them. Uh, you know, it, it gives her a different view on how the industry works. So she then from there went to work for a, a company called Onesta, um, which makes sportswear. And actually she's designed the uh, kit for the Welsh Commonwealth Games team, uh, which, is, which, which will be unveiled, well, in a matter of weeks, really. So, you know, these kinds of things open up all these uh, amazing doors. We do lots of little, little collaborative things, and uh, this is a, a few companies that we work for, and these are all worked for by a, um, this, is, this is all kind of collaborated over a single brief for a couple of different students. It's a company called Dati, which produced this kind of streetwear clothes, a company called Yotna, who produce um, high-tech mountain climbing equipment uh, and mountain climbing clothes, and then a company called Mabli, who produced knitwear. So uh, you can see the, a real kind of diverse group of, of industry there. These are some things that came out of our students last year, some of our graduate students. I'm just gonna click this off because that's annoying me. Uh, looking at all different types of clothing. This is um, some work by a student from Bulgaria who's looking at traditional knitting techniques. Uh, a student from England looking at different types of uh, menswear. This particular jacket is stuffed with all the scraps from all the other clothes. It's nice and sustainable there. Of course, we have some digital fashion going on here. And then this is a, a student who um, was a very interesting student who came to us and actually had a brain tumor. So she had to, um, she had to leave for a year um, while she had surgery and all the kinds of things. And it really changed the way she thought about fashion. And she came back kind of really stripping fashion back and making it very practical. So you can see, for example, this is a trench coat that you can unzip, unzip and unzip and it becomes smaller and smaller jackets, which means one jacket, not three. But, uh, I'm, I'm always trying to tell people to come to my university. So I'm gonna tell you why it's a bit different. Uh, and it's worth you thinking about if you're thinking about studying, regardless of the course, of course, absolutely I'd love you to come and study fashion design um, or one of our other fashion programs. But if you're, if you're thinking about going to university, which is something I'd recommend everybody do, it's important to think about what to ask for and what to look for when you, when you go, to the, go to a different place. So I think it's really important to think about this, right? So our courses are driven by our students. Often you'll go to a, 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 a school and it's certainly a creative school and they'll have a very clear idea of what their students produce. They'll have what they might call a house style. And if you look at their graduate students, the students who leave their course, they all look similar in the, in the work that they produce all look similar. That's not the case for us. We speak with you when you first arrive at the course and we work with you all the way through to achieve the goals that, that, um, that, that you want. Oh dear, this is one of the things, right? I study, I'm a fashion, fashion guy, not a speller. So our goals are, are our, your goals are our jails. Um, it's probably not a very um, smart thing for me to say, but our goals are your goals. Um, we've got world-class digital and physical facilities. Lots of schools will talk a big game, but they have quite small studio spaces and, and quite small facilities. So it's always important to visit and make sure that what you're seeing is what you're seeing. You want to be able to use uh, industrial level machinery and industrial industry level um, facilities. Sustainability is the core of what we do. And as you guys pointed out the, the poll earlier, it's the biggest issue facing fashion today. And it's one of the things that's really tricky, right? To reconcile as a consumer. So how do you buy clothes? How do you buy fashion that you can have fun with, that is light, that's enjoyable, that's joyful and positive, and realize that someone in a factory on the other side of the world has made less than living wage to produce it. I, I you know, and someone's gonna chuck it out, it's gonna end up on landfill and you know, stay around for, for a thousand years. And I think the, the real power in, in solving that problem comes with designers and it comes with design education, that making sure that sustainability isn't a special extra thing, but it's a, a key thing to what you do as a designer. Uh, our students engage with the industry from day one. We're doing live briefs. Uh, at the moment we're doing uh, a live brief with the Welsh Rugby Wheelchair um, uh, Association in our first year like completely, completely left of centre um, briefs that give our students exposure to industry they otherwise wouldn't have. Um, we have a diverse, inclusive and experimental program that's really important for us. When we talk about diverse and inclusive, we mean things like 
that we make sure that we use universal design when it comes to the documents we give to our students so that someone who might be visually impaired is able to read it someone who is dyslexia is able, who, who, who is dyslexia is able to read it people who are on the autistic spectrum are able to kind of thrive in our program because we give them support and um, we look at gender as a spectrum sexuality as, as a spectrum ability as a spectrum those things are really important to us they were able to provide uh, a place that is welcoming and that is inclusive for everyone. Fashion traditionally has been a very exclusive industry, which means it tries to kind of cut people out. Um, but fingers crossed and hopefully we're, we're working towards a better world where that's not the case. Quite genuine, genuinely, you know, our core mission is to change the world, certainly for the better. I should have probably put that in that on this, on this presentation, um, but to make the world a, world a better place than we find it today. Um, so then, you know, we kind of talk about this, right? Typical students and, you know, universities have their own vibes and their own, you know, aesthetics, but what, what does our student look like? Well, we don't really have a typical student. They come from all different backgrounds. Um, they have a variety of experiences. You know, that's something that we really, really value on our programs. Um, you know, for example, often you'll, you'll go to a university and most of the students have studied at a local college and they studied kind of together and they've done similar subjects or they've done similar A-level subjects and they go to the university, really, they're all from similar backgrounds. And, and what you create then is, is a really, um, uh, probably, probably narrow group, right? With a narrow group of experiences. We look for when students apply for our programs that they have a wide variety. Someone might be a, like into horse riding, someone might play sports, someone might have a job, someone might be a carer, someone might have children. You know, those things mean that, that actually you make a group stronger because you can bring lots of different experiences. Uh, the one thing that we do like to look for is that you align with our thoughts on making the world a better place. That's important to us. We do want to make the world a better place and we want to help you do that too. Uh, we also want to make sure you have a voice. So that's really important to us that our, that our students are able to voice their opinion. And we speak to our students very regularly. We meet with a representative um, group of our students every two weeks to, to work on making the course better for you. And making the course more more improved but our students are really really hard working and, you know they're very active they work a lot and it's one thing studying fashion design will teach you is how to work really hard and really fast uh, and they're they're often um, given lots of praise for their heart their hard work ethic but of course they love fashion as we all do when we talk about a fashion designer, these are the things that you have, you know, you'll study these kind of areas, but these are the things uh, that make you you. So you'll be studying things like design, which is about kind of problem solving and thinking. You'll study communication. That might be things like illustration, but it might also be copywriting. It might also be um, social media. It might be how to communicate visually. You'll ha have a lot of technical skills. So that might be physical skills, like how to make clothes and how to pattern cut digital skills, how to create films, for example, or the ones I've shown you today were made by students, um, how to design in a 3D space. You'll look at theoretical uh, things like, okay, how, uh, what is the role of, of, uh, of fashion in communicating um, generational identity? So if we look uh, on the snapshot of the street right now, everyone wearing skinny jeans is a millennial, everyone wearing wide leg jeans is Gen Y, right? you know, maybe not necessarily that, that tight, but you see where I'm going. And in the center of that sits you, sits a person that comes out of university with a range of really, really key skills that can be used absolutely in the fashion industry, but of course, much, much wider as well. I'm going to do, do a little walkthrough now of our, of our campus. Now, this is one that was shot by a student for me last year. She's, she's lovely. She now, um, now works in, oh, it was the student who had the mining, the mining helmet. She works in the north of England uh, as, a, as a textiles teacher at a college. Um, and it might make you a bit nauseous. So if it does, just look away for a bit, but it's really fast. So, I mean, this bit's not so fast. So previous goal the company means uh, University of Wales, yeah, South Wales in Welsh. So this is our long hallway past our library, in front of our campus here in Cardiff. And then this area here is like dance studios and fabrication labs, so 3D printing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fashion is on the fourth floor and you can see that we have um, like shop fronts, shop fronts in, through this area here for our retail students. Um, we have like a little collaborative area here called our Kutch area and Kutch means hug in Welsh. So it's for kind of getting together and talking about stuff. 
Um, we've got one, this is our small studio. You can see all the industrial machinery and all other bits and bobs, um, all kind of fun. And this is our, now as a photo, yep, I was gonna say it has a photo, photo studio in it, but now it does. Um, there we go. Down to our larger studio. Oh, are we gonna go inside? No, we're just gonna look at the window. Oh, there's a class on it at the time, I suppose. Um, so larger studio and our staff offices. So next poll, here we go. Jess, hook me up here. Um, do you see fashion design differently than you did before? Okay, positive, I'm feeling positive. Okay, well. I hope the person who chose choice two was already uh, an expert at, uh, at fashion. Okay, thank you very much. Oh. As I say in Wales, thank you very much. Um, look, you can follow us on our Instagram here, but I'm much wondering, I'm just looking, at, Jess, let's have a look at our time. Yeah, I'm wondering if I've got kind of 15 minutes that I can um, walk you through some student work. So unless there's any questions while I transition over. All right, so what we have here is um, some student work, right? This is a, this is a, a first year fashion design student. Uh, at this time of year. So it's actually, it's for a student from last year. Um, the students who are working on it this year haven't submitted yet, but it's a student from last year. This is one of the modules that, this, that you do. So you do six modules a year uh, and they, they operate very slightly differently. This one runs over six weeks. So it's a kind of intensive module, um, but I'll walk you through what, we, oh, what we've got here. So the student was, uh, the brief that I asked was to take a piece of discarded clothing and to turn it into something new sustainable fashion brief. So this person was looking at kind of design thinking, how do we create ideas? They were uh, looking at ethical fashion. They were watching a documentary on, on uh, which is a great documentary, Waste Equals Food, fantastic one. Looking at some precedents, so, so where other companies have done similar things. So looking at uh, Nike, uh, then looking at, okay, we've got some problems here. How do I, uh, how do I resolve them? So they've explored biological fashion, slow fashion, non-toxic toxic fashion, looking at different ways of approaching uh, fashion design. This is this one at the bottom here, cradle to grave. I'm gonna use a little hand because that's fun. Cradle to grave is where we are right now usually. So we buy our stuff, we wear it, then we throw it away, that's it. And what he's suggesting is that we kind of move into this space here. Predominantly he's looking at this one. So recycling as opposed to kind of recomposting, but there we go. I won't actually go through everything. There's, there's a stack here, but he's looking at other different labels and how they work. Uh, uh, looking at the brand he's working for. So this is one of the projects we did for Yotna. Looking at the clothes they're doing, looking at the product overview, product analysis. So one thing he found was that there wasn't enough women's wear. Um, so I'll jump to that bit actually. Looking at comp competitors. So he's done some research here, done some surveys. Okay, so this is his target market. So he's looking at this idea of a kind of competitive rock climber um, who's into sustainability, that kind of stuff. Exploring other labels again. Okay, then I'll scooch all the way through. Lots and lots of research, looking at art movements, looking at art concept ideas. And see, these are just some early ideas. These are, called, these are called design sprints. And design sprints are something where you try and get as many ideas out in a shorter manner as possible. So they might last for two seconds each, which is why they look like this. Um, two or three seconds each. And it's just about kind of getting as many ideas out as possible. And from those ideas, you know, you get seeds of ideas that grow. So if we fast forward, we can see him going, okay, building a concept. Okay, good, good, good. Here's a, here's a few ideas for that concept. Got some feedback, I'm looking at some more um, design sprints. Kind of building and building building into things that look a bit more like clothes. Okay, a bit more like clothes. Looking again, more some research here. Okay, looking at uh, patterns, building again. Now again, this is six weeks. So you can see it's really, really fast to produce this kind of stuff. Um, so he's thinking, okay, well, what, what kind of stuff would they take with them? These this kind of equipment. All right, so putting all these ideas together, different colors, 
And here's where we get our kind of real design bit. So you can see we're about halfway through the process here. So the first half is primarily about kind of developing ideas and, and kind of research. And as we kind of grow, we start to kind of form into, into stronger, stronger ideas. And this is where we start to get the designs that have been evolved. So the idea for, for design isn't that you, that you kind of start with a finished article that just pops into your head and you create it. It's about working through a process of, or it's a bit like, like playing a sport or, or playing an instrument. You have to get better and better and better the more you do. So the first step to being great at something is to suck at it. Uh, and, and you can see at the very beginning, they're just like little scribbles. They're not real drawings. Um, but as you go through it, you get better and better and better and your ideas become more solid. So it's exploring ideas, 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 and it's chucked them onto a body here. Okay, great. So, you know, some interesting kind of clothes here and very different to what we would expect from those initial drawings. So he's chosen this design as an, as an option. And this is the garment that he's taken apart to turn into a new one. So you can see where it might go on the, on the garment. And he's kind of produced his little technical drawing here. And he's looking at, uh, this is an art movement. Suprematism is an art movement. So he's saying, okay, well, look, this art movement uh, used lots of, geometric shapes. I took all the pockets off to see what this might look like. And I've done a range of different of these suprematist drawings at the top here, and I've turned them into garments. Changed how they might be placed on the body. And then he's um, done some twirling, which is like a practice garment out of calico, which is like, a, like a cotton, you know, to test the ideas. And uh, where are we at the end here? You can see the ideas are starting to kind of come, come to shape and turn into real things. And this is still the practice garment, but that's, that's where we've ended up. So you can see uh, it, it is about kind of process. Let's see what this has got here. Now he's got his final garment. And then he's looking at different materials, compostable fabrics, you know, refining his design, all that, all that kind of stuff. I can go. I could go all the way through if you if you were super excited. Oh yes, he turned some scrap fabric that he had from the from the garment into a backpack to hold the water for the for the hiker. I'm not 100 percent convinced by that, but you know it's a good way of um, of of using the waste material. So that's it from me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And let me jump back into the room. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yeah, please, please. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the chat. Um, I was just going to ask a question, Steve. So I know you said like you didn't need to be like good at drawing <laughs> to, to go onto the course. Would you expect students to have done art or textiles at A level or college as one of their subjects to get no. onto this course? No, 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 not 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 necessary. It's it's you know, I'm, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't advantageous if I had done it. So um, it's good because you just know you know you know a bit about the process more than anything else you know you, it, it's a, it's probably a bit more familiar than you um but for for us what we we take all our students um on a kind of notion of first principles and that means that nobody knows anything when they when they come to our course that's the idea so if you if you haven't done art before that's fine you know because you would have done something else that somebody somebody else in the program hasn't done so you'll you'll bring something unique you know um we have we have lots of people who do our do our course that maybe have um, you know uh, are doing it as second careers for example so they've got a whole we've got a student who's studying with this issue who's a retired police officer so so her whole experience is going to be so different to everyone else's on the program but they're going to learn a stack from her so yeah you don't need to have studied studied um, art before awesome thank you and just another question um, which do you, as part of like the application process, do you have to provide like a portfolio or show any of your designs as part of that? Yeah, so the application process um, is twofold. So firstly, you know, you apply through UCAS, the stand away, uh, and then you have a portfolio interview. And that sounds really terrifying. And for some universities, it's supposed to be. Ours is not like that. So what we, what we want to see from a portfolio is really what we might call creative aptitude and creative attitude. So aptitude in the sense that um, some creative stuff you've done. Now that could be, hey, look, I'm, I'm awesome at cooking. I've, I've made some cakes and they're really creative and interesting. Great, that's super creative. I've written a song, really creative. I've made clothes, even better. You know, like, uh, oh, I customized a t-shirt because I went to a festival. Sweet, we'll take a look at that. Um, if you studied art before or something like that, a sketchbook is a really good thing um, because it shows us your thinking. And that's what we're looking for from the portfolio, how you think. Uh, as a creative person you know we, there's so much that we can teach you but one of the things we can't teach you is kind of having that open mind and being a kind of interesting thinker now not not everyone is the same kind of creative thinker so that's why we look at portfolios 
And the reason why we do that is because we're trying to create a class, a co class cohort that is that is diverse, um, and it's complementary. Uh, and when we, when you have the interview, that's what the that's what the interview is about. It's not to say show me your work and I'll decide if you're good or you're bad. <laughs> it's a let's talk about who you are and what kind of designer you are. One of the things I think works really well as a great interview question is something like, "What's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite, you know, what's your favorite movie?" Mm -hmm. it, you can tell a lot of a better person by that, you know. And there's no wrong answer, and people kind of get really flustered off and be like, "Oh my god, I have to like say the right thing." Mm -hmm. um, but you know, like my favorite TV show at the moment is Married at First Sight Australia. It's the best thing on TV. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's absolutely superb. And if you haven't watched it, I would recommend watching it. But you know, it, it it's it's so it's it's completely stupid and it's really fun and really dumb. But it's certainly it's certainly there's a wide variety of clothing on there, and and absolutely it's worth a con a conversation about how people interact with each other. Mm. Yeah, reality TV is is so fascinating. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, please do pop them in the chat. Um, but I'm just going to launch our last poll and just let you know that our last session in this webinar series is next week. Um, I can't believe it's the end, um, but that will be with the Bristol Old Vic Theatre School and we'll be looking at theatre production. Um, so as normal, we'll email you the link. Um, so please feel free to come along to that next week. Um, Hopefully some of you are answering the feedback. We love your feedback, so thank you so much. Um, and a huge, huge thank you again to Steve um, for your time this evening. It's been so fascinating. So thank you so much. Um, Absolutely, anytime. You too. Oh, we have got a question in the chat, if you don't mind, Steve. Please. Um, how could someone start getting into fashion? Um, and they've said, P.S. I love your nails, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, here's the thing about my nails, right? They're actually supposed to change colour. Oh. And they're supposed to be like a light blue and they're supposed to go then this kind of lemony green. But I'm a hot blooded person and they and they never change colour. So I, you know, anyway, that's a whole <laughs> other issue that I've got it's to do. Amazing. How do you start getting into fashion? I think I suppose um it depends um where where you are. So is it Jess McPhillips? Is that that who that who's who's written that? Where where are you in your kind of educational journey? GCSEs. GCSEs. Ah, great. So what I would say is to is to if you if you're kind of currently doing them or you're about to choose which GCSEs to take, I think it's it's about choosing choosing something that you're interested in and that you're keen on. Um, when it comes to when it comes to kind of learning, there's no there's no wrong way to learn. And if you're if you're engaged in something that you're interested in, then you'll be fine. Like for example, if you love history, there's an absolute ton on fashion history. Great, wonderful. Um, if you're interested in maths, uh, brilliant. The fashion industry makes an absolute shed load of money, so it's a, there's a perfect career there for you. But if you if you if you just like creative things, then just do that. That's absolutely fine. Um, and I, I I would say then in terms of kind of getting into fashion, start kind of connecting to fashion beyond something like social media because it'll be it'll be curated for you, and and the algorithm will decide what you see. So I, I would say choose. There's a great website called The Business of Fashion, BOF, um, which, is, which is worth looking at. I think um, listening to fashion podcasts is a really good, good thing. There's one called Dressed, um, which is the history, history of fashion, but The Business of Fashion has one. And, and there's a great one by a comedian called um, uh, Who Are You Wearing? Um, Kerry Pritchard McLean is the name of the comedian. Great little, great little podcast. Um, that's just worth, like, they're just things to listen to, they're entertaining. Um, when I when I was a, a kind of young young fashion student, and I I I studied other stuff before I studied um, fashion at, at university. I studied education and, and nursing and all these kinds of things. Um, so kind of for me, what I did in the first few months when I was when I was studying at university, I was always interested in fashion. I liked to, to make my own clothes. That's another good thing to do. Um, is I tried to watch as many fashion shows as possible from other. Um, from 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 other designers and from other other eras and other years, and certainly in in terms of kind of British design, there is an absolute mountain of material out there. Looking at Vivian Westfield, looking at um, Alexander McQueen, there's so many documentaries you can watch. But you know, to be honest, like for 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 me, as as I've gotten older, I I, I still love fashion, but I think you need to feed your creativity. So so you need to bring other stuff to it too. 
Um, so I, I would say study what you're studying, enjoy what you're enjoying, and then um, pick up some fashion bits uh, as they excite you. Amazing. Thanks, Steve. Long-winded answer to that one, isn't it? No, but really, really helpful. Um, if anybody else has any other final questions, please do put them in the chat. I, I do love I do love questions. They make a massive difference. It helps, helps <laughs> us kind of focus on what we're doing. Nothing else coming in at the minute. If I anybody does so. have anything, um, you can. You've obviously got our Creative Futures email. So if you do think of anything uh, when we send out the presentation and things, please do ask because we can put those to Steve. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. <laughs> yeah, absolutely um, fine. And we'll share some links to those podcasts and uh, the website that you mentioned as well, because I think that'll be really, really helpful. Um, but if there is no other questions, that just leaves me to say thank you so much, for everyone, for joining us. Um, and a huge thank you so much, Steve. It's been so, so helpful to have you here tonight. Um, and hopefully we'll see you again <laughs> on another Study Five program. I'd love to see you again. Thank you very much. <laughs> I had a great time. Amazing. Thank, thank you, Steve. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. See you, everyone. Bye.